and we're back. All right, guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, I just wanted to say, um, you know, last guest uh, was an incredible, um, you know, experience. And I, uh, you know, got a lot to learn still yet when it comes to essential oils um, because there's so much to know about it. And, you know, when it comes to understanding your health, again, everything is step by step. So, you know, just like with me, um, when it comes to, you know, teaching my students, um, whether it be trainers or my, my students in, you know, whatever, um, case may be, I always try to start them from the basics. So don't overwhelm yourself to know all the essential oils that are out there. Just start with the basics. Like we talked about was like frankincense is great for your skin. It's great for muscle pain and things like that. So, you know, um, going from essential oils, um, you know, I have my next guest and we're going to be talking about, and we did this in the past show before, but we're going to dive into another realm, a different area of, um, of this, but we're going to learn more about gut health for your physical and mental wellness. And, you know, I, I'm, I partnered up uh, tonight, uh, today with uh, a group that is uh, fairly new in the industry, but they have a, a great source of information when it comes to your, your gut brain connection. And, you know, I'm lucky enough to have in the studio with me a, a nurse practitioner who is not just a nurse practitioner, but she's done a lot of different things and she's brilliant. And I'm, and I'm going to go ahead and read her bio, but before I do, I just want to say welcome to, um, Claire Roche. Claire Roche. Yeah. Roche. Roche. Hi, Bianca. That's a beautiful name, by the way. What is that? It's um, German. German. Oh. It um, means beer. Oh, German. even better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's medicinal, isn't it? No, I'm <laughs> well, Claire, you're, um, you're an advanced practice uh, registered nurse. Uh, what exactly is, is that? What, are you, is it because of your degrees? Yeah, I'm a registered nurse, and then... After I had been a registered nurse for a number of years, then I went back to school and um, in family nurse practitioner and and got an advanced, a, a master's degree. And then a couple of years later, then I went back um, and studied some more and got a postgraduate certificate in adult psychiatric um, wow. mental health nursing. So I, I, It does go hand in hand, though, doesn't it? It's like when you're thinking about what you're doing, I mean... Yeah. Well, and it's always been really um, important to me in my undergraduate nursing program. Um, the our theoretical concept was the idea of wellness and the body as a whole. You can't separate out the parts, and so it's always been very important to me to promote um, whole body wellness, huh. um, the mental health and the physical health at the same time. They go hand in hand. You can't. You can't. Cut you can't. The, the <laughs> yeah, you can't cut your head off. No, no. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so true. I always I always tell the audience, and I try to help educate and remind because you know a lot of them are smart, but then at the same time, some of them don't understand the way the body works. Your brain is like the 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 uh, chief officer, you know, like the CEO, let's say, and then you got the central nervous system, which is like the like the president or you know vice president of the the business, and then you've got the neurotransmitters, which is the nervous system, are like your middle class managers, you know, and then you've got the receptors or like your, uh, what do you call it? Your, uh, supervisors, you know, that go to their well, specific departments, like your organs, you know, and it's now if, if I can interrupt you, um, Bianca, what we've also found is that, um, there's a whole new science that's developing around the, the, the gut yeah. and the gut microbiome. And actually a lot of times in the literature, you'll see they refer to the gut microbiome as the second brain. And we're starting to learn about how the gut is very much connected to the brain. So it's not, once again, it's, it's not just your brain. It's all the other systems in right. your body that are really important for giving that feedback, as you say, through the central nervous system. There's all sorts of interesting stuff that's been yeah. coming out in the last five, ten years. Yeah, I mean, the neurotransmitters in itself, like the serotonin and the dopamine are all in the gut. And they think that it's in the brain, but it's more in the gut than it is in the brain. And that's, that's your happy, happy, happy neurotransmitters. You know, yeah, 95% of the serotonin, we believe, is produced in the gut. Right. So being able to have that communication track working well between the gut and the brain is very important. Yeah. So what causes that mishap though? That's what, that's the, stinker because a lot of people have gut issues sore stomach 
acid reflux. They may have, um, you know, uh, you know, not able to eliminate because they're too constipated. Mm -hmm. There's, and these are all miscommunication. Yeah. Or the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there, I have a friend who also, uh, has fibromyalgia like me. She's constantly wakes up with, uh, you know, nausea Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's weird. I mean, mm-hmm. what's going on there? I mean, is there not, not enough acid in the stomach? So these are all questions that a lot of people try to figure out and doctors kind of, God bless them. They give you a pill, like, you know, you know, something to like Tums or something to kind of help that, but it doesn't really fix it. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and you bring up a good point. It's not just, I, I, at, at this day and age, we're also dealing with stress. The, the World Health Organization um, states that they believe that stress is the, the, the epidemic of the 20th century. Um, and where does, where does stress come from? It's not just the brain. Um, you know how you can talk about getting butterflies in your stomach yeah. when you feel a little bit nervous. Right. Um, but we've also started to learn that it affects the way the body works. Depression, anxiety, that's all involved with stress. But as you said, 95% of the neuro, of the serotonin is produced in the gut. And if it's not getting up to the brain right. the right way, um, that can cause problems. And maybe you're not managing your stress as well. Um, you think you are, but you're not. Yeah. Well, Sometimes. yeah. And we, we all tend to downplay stress. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell you even, um, I just recently retired this summer. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I notice I'm noticing all sorts of different things now mm. that are going on for my own body because my stress level is less. Mm. Um, but a lot of times we downplay stress and we just tough it out. And especially now at this juncture in our society where we're dealing with the stress from um, all the changes that have been brought about in our lives because yeah. of COVID-19. Right. But the other thing we also know is if the gut microbiome and your brain, if they're communicating well and, and you've got a good, a, a rich and diverse gut microbiome and it's communicating well with the brain, we also know that your immune system, and we call it an axis with right. Amari, we call it a gut brain axis. And the reason why we call it an axis is because the third part of that is your immune system benefits. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's very important to pay attention to that. Um, and one of the things that can disrupt that, um, we have, we kind of call it the Western diet, hmm. um, high fats, high sugar, high salt. Yeah. And there's a lot of people um, nowadays that have diseases. I call them metabolic diseases. Yeah. But then they also have um, mental health um, parts of them also, um, people with chronic pain, they have depression, um, people with diabetes, um, they can end up with depression. They can end up with depression from the medication. Even dem- dementia, because mm-hmm. sugar is poison to the system to begin with. So when you don't have a balanced sugar, you know, insulin level it can cause a lot of... Other- Actually, I was just looking at some stuff about that the other day and... Yeah, the, the, they were starting to find out that the gut, the gut microbiome is involved in Alzheimer's. You know, they, they talk about the plaques mm-hmm. that can develop in the brain, but the plaque theory never quite um, panned out exactly because it didn't explain why people who also had the plaque tangles in their brains, why they didn't have the behavioral components of Alzheimer's. Hmm. Um, but now what we're starting to find out is that the microbiome also has an influence. Another um, neurodegenerative type of disorder in that respect is um, Parkinson's. Yeah. And that's another uh, disease process that we're finding has a connection to the gut microbiome. So the importance of um, watching your diet and not just going with the regular Western diet, um, but eating more. Actually, um, people that are onto this science they like to talk about the um, the Mediterranean diet as right. probably the number one diet that you should be following, and like like the paleo diet, it's a good diet minus um, the grains and the dairy. Yeah, yeah, but they're saying um, 
the Mediterranean diet is yeah. number one for making sure that you have a rich and diverse microbiome. Well, that makes sense too. And, I, and, and my audience is well uh, aware of my passion for healthy nutrition because with me having fibromyalgia, that could also be another gut issue. Um, I mean, because, you know, it makes sense because everything is in, it starts in the gut. Um, so it makes sense to me because when you have a specific type of also food allergens, Mm-hmm. It could be based off the fact that you don't have the right bacteriums in the gut. And and the, my audience has heard me say this, there is more bacteria in your body than there is the human cell. Yeah. I well, mean, and, think of that. And very interestingly, there's been some work that's, that's occurred over the last number of years um, where with the Human Genome Project, where they looked at what are what's the gene m- typing, what's the gene makeup of all the cells in the human body. Then what those people also started to realize is that the, the bacteria in the gut, that, that, has, that has tons, tons more of gene types hmm. than what we have in the rest of, of our body, like going on approximately more than 100 million different gene types. Really? Yeah. And, oh, because and of the bacteria's own gene it, types. This is the actual gene types. And one of the things that we've started to learn, and this is kind of what caught my eye, caught my attention when I first was, when I first decided, oh, this Amari Global products, they might be some pretty interesting stuff to pay attention to. Um, I heard one of our, our chief science officer, Dr. Sean Talbot, um, he talked about, and he's been very instrumental in developing all the products. And he talked um, about gene typing. And he just said, it's important to know what the bacteria in the probiotics that you're taking, what will that do for you? Now, what you have to do is, and, and at the time I was taking a probiotic supplement, and I went back and I looked at it. What he had said was that usually they'll have a, a letter or a number, or both, letter and a number, after the, if it's good probiotic, and they've done their work and found out the gene typing. And it's important to know about the gene typing because that means, well, this is what this bacteria does. Um, in in the, in our, our, our flagship product for Amari Global, um, we have three products, and we term it the fundamentals pack. And one of the products is for the gut, for the gut microbiome, and it's got probiotics in it, and it's got prebiotics in it. And as I understand it, the probiotics that are in that product, um, they work well, their gene type works well for stress, depression, anxiety. Um, They've got a couple of other probiotics in there, and, and they've typed them, and they they've specified the probiotics that they have in their their product, and that's why we call it the Mental Wellness com- Company. Uh, what they've also put into that that mentobiotics part is also um, prebiotics and also phytobiotics. I don't know if those are terms that you're familiar with. Yes. Okay. But the audience might not be. So go okay. ahead and explain it. Prebiotics are what what sets the environment for the probiotic to be able to live inside your gut. And then the phytobiotics um, are what feed the probiotics because they got to have, they got to have food. food. Yes. Yeah. And then the byproducts of that, that bacteria are what our body uses. That's, that's what goes into the bloodstream. Now you mentioned earlier that what, you know, so, if something goes wrong in your gut, what, what can go wrong in your gut? Well, there's a number of things that can go wrong in your gut. Um, one of the things that, that to me is very important to be aware of is um, leaky gut syndrome. Right. And what we're starting to find is that sometimes because of diet, because of con- conditions that you're dealing with, a number of different things can affect it. The, um, the permeability in your gut, you have these epithelial cells, and they they've kind of got um, they've got little projections from them, little villi, and then also a kind of an, and they help with the digestion, and then even on top of that villi is kind of a mucus layer, right? And it's very important 
part of gut health. Many, many things can affect it. Um, Sometimes what can happen is those, and we call them epithelial cells, the cells that go from your nose and your mouth all the way through your digestive tract, all the way to your cole. It's all a layer of epithelial cells. They're the same type of cells. They have different functions in different parts of the body, okay? But what can happen is the, we call it the junction between those cells as they sit right one next to each other. Um, they can become less tight and um, digestive byproducts, I guess I'll call it, or endotoxins from like pathogenic bacterias, uh, they can get through those junctions and they go into, they can get into your bloodstream. Right. Um, and, and go somewhere else. Well, and, yeah. and a lot of times what happens is the body, it, it can activate the immune system. Um, it can also have the, 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 um, in the blood, they can look at it and your immune system can say, eh, that's not something that's supposed to be in there. And it can be treated as, as a bad thing in right. your, in your blood. It can also end up going up into your brain. Um, there's a protective, I guess, layer, I would call it to your brain called the blood brain barrier. Right. And when these, when these products come through that your body doesn't really need, and they're in your bloodstream, what you get is you get inflammation because your immune system has been well, activated. And that's what I have. <laughs> yeah. That's probably what I have. And, and also then when they go into your bloodstream, they can also cause inflammation in that blood brain sure. barrier too. Sure. And then you can end up with neuroinflammation. Um, it, it just cascades. It sure. Cascades. And, and that's why I think for a lot of people, when I talk about nutrition, I talk about you know, the way your body may simulate the food, your liver and the way it processes fat and all this stuff, it all has to do with either mold or toxin overload in the system. It could be not enough, the good bacteria, but sometimes having too much of the good bacteria is not good for your body either because that overrides the other balance system. So everything has to be, that's why I say we're talking about balance, yeah, well-being. A rich and diverse gut yeah. microbiome. And microbiome. to get to that level too, it's it, there are tests that are out there that people can go to like their naturopath or DOs and say, oh, I need to get a test to see what type of microbiomes my gut has and what is conducive to me mm -hmm. because not everybody's the same. There's maybe three different types of bodies. There was a Chinese man in China, obviously he's in China, but he's a, he's an acupuncturist doctor. He's a Chinese medicine doctor. Mm -hmm. He studied the gut for a long time, 30, 40 years, different types of, he found out that people generally, there's three different types of people with a three different type of mm -hmm. microbiome. And from that three different type of microbiome, he was able to relate it to the gut brain thing. Mm -hmm. And he said that not every probiotic is for, for the same person. Like what you take may thrive for you and make you better. Mm -hmm. What, what I take may not work mm -hmm. for me. Well, and, and it also goes back to that knowing what the, the gene typing, of if you're taking a probiotic, knowing what the gene pro, pro, the gene typing does, like if, um, you know, you go into a health food store, yeah, and and you say, okay, I'm interested in taking a probiotic, and they take you to the area uh, where all the probiotics are, and you're looking at them all, and there is some information that you can find on the web about how many colonies uh, you should have and how many actual bacteria should be in the product that you're taking, but also that's where the gene typing comes right. in. Because if you're dealing with, um, say you're dealing with being constipated and you're thinking, well, maybe there's something going on. Maybe if I put some good bacteria into my stomach, that would help me with digesting my food better. And then I wouldn't be dealing with the, with the constipation. But what if you grabbed a probiotic that the gene typing of those probiotics that are in there actually promote constipation. Oh yeah. I mean um, that makes sense. Yeah. Which and, and in actuality you probably want one that is making everything move a little bit faster and actually might have some um diarrheal type of properties into it. But you don't know that. No. According that. to the probiotics. So the gene typing of the probiotics, it, it just made so much sense. So the to gene me. typing is the ones that has the numbers at the end of it? Letters and numbers. Letters and numbers. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the and, company yeah. that you're working for right now, um, uh, working with, uh, is, so this company has got that technology in it then. They're, they're able to have, so what was the company that you're with now called? 
It's called Amari Global. Okay. And so, and there's different types of things that are uh, like packages that are put together for specific mm-hmm. situations. So, um, not sure. I mean, so how have you felt on it? Like, have you taken it? Well, uh, um, oh gosh, even I can't even remember how long ago it was. I was, um, given a diagnosis of, of being gluten sensitive. Um, and if I got into wheat, barley, or rye, which is, they have a gluten protein in them, um, it would, it would get into my bloodstream from my digestive system. And the, the reaction that I had, my body had to it, to that inflammation, I'd get migraine headaches for three days. Oh. Um, and as I got older, um, it got more frequent, maybe a little bit more severe. Um, when I finally figured out that I was sensitive to gluten and I worked on keeping gluten out of my system, um, I didn't have migraine headaches. The problem is, though, is that every once in a while, um, I would get into something that had gluten in it and I didn't know it. And whoever I, if it was like in a restaurant or something like that, they didn't know it. And so then I could end up once again having the migraine headache. Um, I have been taking the Amari products now for about a year and a half, I guess it would be. And I still have some sensitivities in, in my digestive system to certain proteins because a lot right. of times the gluten sensitivity, you also have sensitivities to other proteins right. too. But right now, every once in a while, I think to myself, well, maybe I got into something that had some gluten in it and I didn't know about right. it. But I'll get just a little bit of a headache. Right. Um, not, not as severe. So you took the edge off. You were able to balance mm-hmm. enough to get your body to respond uh, less dramatically. I was going to ask you too. I know you brought on a, a friend of yours um, that's also works with um, your company. She's a wellness representative. Yes, wonderful. And her name is Robin Stuber. Stuber. Okay, um, Robin, are you on? Hi. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Good Robin. Afternoon, I well, am. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I'm, I'm so honored to have you here, um, and you and Claire together. I just wanted to. We were. I don't know if you heard anything that we were talking about. With Claire was just mentioning to me about her um, experience with some of the products that you guys have in the company. Um, you had uh, mentioned something about uh, your, your your child having an experience um, with some of the products that um, that you guys uh, offer. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. Claire was talking about gluten sensitivity and, um, that's actually my personal story too. Um, I'm here. I'm with you guys. I I have gluten sensitivity too. So yeah, (laughs) you know, it was, you know, yeah, my gluten sensitivity started, well, the symptoms of it, you know, the reactions, uh, came about. And I, you know, at that time, you know, you, you go to the regular doctor, in my case, it was a rash that was showing up at my joint spot. Mm-hmm. And um, like my elbows and my knees and the back of my neck. And, oh you know, the, your first inclination is to go to a dermatologist and all right. they want to do is prescribe you a cortisone cream. And I'm yeah. thinking, no, 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 no. This is something may, m- much deeper than that. But you don't get any help that way. And so I had to, of course, do all my own homework and do my own research to find out that it was probably um, an autoimmune response coming from a leaky gut. And so my focus was completely on repairing that. And then, you know, I found Amari. And, um, you know, while they, the focus of Amari is um, mental wellness and um, optimizing the gut-brain axis for um, more uh, balanced mood states and all of those things, I knew that it also addressed healing, you know, repairing your, your gut or helping your gut to operate much better. And, of course, the microbiome and all of that stuff. So I've actually been, Claire mentioned that she has been um, using the Amari products for over a year. I've actually been using it now for over three years. Wow. And I can tell you that I have not had um, a gluten reaction. I can't even remember the last So time. are you able to eat gluten now? You know, I, I, I <laughs> avoid curious. it still, you know, but I, I, I have, I've told my husband that I, I want to try and have like a full-on nabe yaki udong. Oh, bowl. nice. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> you know, because Robin has, you know, because I, I sure. just want to see, you know, I have my, my sense is that my gut, my leaky gut has improved because not only have I, you know, not had it, of course, I avoid gluten, but I just kind of 
feel it. You know, I feel more energetic. I just feel a lot more like I'm my, you know, my whole body is operating at a much better level. And then, um, so, and then Robin's mm-hmm. also had some interesting experiences with introducing the Amari products to people with other conditions. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted her to come and talk about that also. So Robin, if you want to go ahead. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, of course I'm all excited, which is a part of why I decided to become a wellness partner with Amari because it was working for me. But on top of that, I started encouraging my family and friends to improve their gut health. And so I had my mom, uh, take the products as well, specifically um, a pack called the Fundamentals. And my mom is, right now she's seven, uh, 81 years old, but she was diagnosed with uh, type 2 diabetes when she was around like 10 years ago when she was 71. And I, through my own research, learned that type 2 diabetes uh, is related, you know, to uh, as an autoimmune condition and can right. be associated with leaky gut. So I had my mom start on the products and Within about three or four months, her A1C level, which was above seven, came down to where it is today in the normal range of, of around 5.5. Ooh, that's amazing. Um, yes. Yeah. And, you know, at 81 did she years her, old. Did, did she it, change her diet too, though? Nope. Nope. My nope. mom, you know, at that age, they're pretty much going <laughs> to, you know, Setting doing doing the supplements. <laughs> yes. Doing the supplements was pretty much, you know, what she was willing to do. She has not changed her diet. I know. My mom's um, she's like that too. also a can- yeah, she's also a cancer survivor and she God also, you know, is very is very compliant with her doctors. And so this was just doing the fundamentals was something that she was willing to do. Right. But since then, and now she's probably been uh, using Amari products for about a year, her overall health, not just her A one C levels, but her overall health is is just improving it it's astonishing her doctors all of her diagnostic blood work is coming Robin, back. i'm so sorry i'm gonna have to cut you off but this is where the part no of way. my show that's terrible where it ends it's like so quickly but i want to say thank you to my guests claire and robin you guys are awesome and how can they reach you what's your website mari global just put that into your browser okay and then um to be able to buy some of the products one of the wellness partners needs to uh, give you a special number, a special count number. Not a problem. Have. And you know what? I'll get all of that for you guys. Guys, I'll put it on my YouTube and on my Facebook and Instagram. And on you guys will have a place to go. Go to Be Fit for Health and uh, find me there. And I'll get all that information for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in for this great episode of Gut Health. And I'll see you guys next Sunday. Aloha.